Well, you guessed it. I'm working on a starter motor problem, and it's a pretty funny problem the way I'm going to fix it. Truly, and absolutely, a redneck repair. Let me explain. Well, first of all, here's a starter I'm using as an example. It's from a 4.3 Chev motor. So, you have B plus positive going to the starter all the time. You have your trigger wire for your solenoid, which goes to the key or to a starter solenoid, or a relay. Then you have your power output from the solenoid, which rotates the motor. Well, of course, the Ford starter is no different. It's just easiest to get at through the wheel well. The difference in this case is that Ford, for the last 20 years, has very often put two solenoids on their vehicle. One that's part of the starter motor, and it's the old-fashioned kind that they always use on their firewall. And they use, it's like kind of redundant, but they use this solenoid just to resend the electricity down to the trigger circuit and engages the solenoid. Well, that solenoid's working fine. And the one that's on the vehicle sounds like it's working fine, clicks and engages. But this Ford vehicle had a little problem racing Graham in a Saturn on the field on the weekend. The starter motor, for some reason, stayed engaged and kept trying to crank, so they had to disconnect the battery. Then after some screwing around, they did get it running again but the starter motor didn't function after that. And, needless to say, they, Ozzy tried to fix it, but he got to the point where he couldn't because the starter motor wasn't functioning. Yet the motor part of it actually works, and the solenoid actually engages. And he did fix the burned up and chewed up wires, but... But I'm sure the two copper posts in there, which are the contacts, probably have burned out. Because no matter whether you manually engage this by arcing it, everything clicks and sounds like it moves. And if you manually run power to engage the, the spinning part of the starter motor, it runs fine too. So it looks like the two contacts have burnt out or burned off whenever that happened. So what I'm going to do is bypass the electrical part of the solenoid, but keep its mechanical part functioning to engage the drive. So solenoids, if you didn't already know it, when you send power to the trigger, the electromagnet turns on, and the circuit is completed by the positive output, and it goes through this wire, through the armature, then becomes ground. So solenoids actually ground themselves through the positive side of the armature, and then through the armature. So sometimes your solenoid doesn't work, and it's nothing to do with your solenoid, why it doesn't make a sound or engage. You've got a dead spot on your armature, and it just happened to stop in that position where there's a dead spot, so it's not making a connection through the brushes all the way through to ground. So I've taken off this permanently, I've ran this to ground, so my solenoid is grounded in a way normally not ever done. I'm not even going to bother using the top terminal. The terminal that did go to the top terminal, which is the big fat B plus wire, is now going to go with a nut and bolt, which I have sitting right there, together. But it's not going to have constant power all the time like it did before. What I've done is I've snipped it off where it went to the battery, so it's not constant power anymore. And I'm going to put it to that other relay or solenoid that's up here, so it has momentary power. Now, these are the same solenoids they've been using for years to uh, send power to the starter motor, so they can certainly handle full current. And at the same time, when you turn the key and this clicks and engages, it's also going to send power down that skinny red wire and engage, or whatever color it is. Yeah, it's red and engage the starter solenoid at the same time so that the Bendix engages the flywheel. So let's hook it all up and try it, see what happens, and we just have an extra wire in case we ever need it. Okay, those two wires are bolted together, now for the top part. Alright, the rerouting is complete, let's try her out. Alright, here we go. Simple, redneck, cheap, you can't get better than that. Well, I hope he appreciates it because I'm down to my last seven beers, and this was so much easier than taking off a starter motor, driving out to the auto wreckers, and spending 40 or 50 bucks to get another one and hoping it works. And I guess nothing can probably go wrong. I just got to tie the wires up so they don't hit the manifold. Job well done, and as raw as it gets. 
And if that Aussie guy is watching who's already worked on this vehicle to get all the wiring fixed and try to get it going, well, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Cheers and beers. I'm off for one now.